Yo, this hands on. We on BTV with Taylor B. Peace, Queen. Salute. BTV Productions. The Cultural Preservation Station. Tune in. Tune in. Welcome to the Hip Hop Hour on BTV. Black education empowers true vision. I'm your host, Teller B. The Queen, bringing you the authentic hip-hop scene. We have a special guest for you tonight, representing Staten Island, New York, the man himself. He's an artist, executive producer of the Meth Lab 1 and 2, chief operating officer of the Meth Lab Studio, CEO of Hands-On Music Entertainment, the king himself, Hands-On. Welcome to the show, King. Salute. Thank Salute. You Absolutely. Thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome to BTV. It's a pleasure to have you on my platform. So we're going to get right into this. Okay. All right. So tell us a little bit, King, about bit about your history in hip hop, your journey from being incarcerated to becoming a Wu-Tang affiliated member and launching your solo career. How Method Man helped you out during that time? Well, you know, well, you know, I was incarcerated. I was always, you know, made music as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Never really took it serious, but mm -hmm. it was something that we did outside just on an everyday basis, mm -hmm. you know, my little stints in jail, you know, the typical story that everybody from the hood got went right. to jail, you know, came home, went back to jail, came home, you know, so, you know, the big, the big homies just, you know, progressed mm -hmm. in their careers while I was gone. And it went from something that was a hobby for them to something that was actually feeding them and, you know, they taking care of their families with it and stuff like that. So. That that basically influenced me to try to dive in and you know take take a crack at it. Not only as an artist though, but I was always interested in the business side of it, and mm -hmm. you know uh, always had aspirations to you know try the business out and stuff like that. And you know along the way, you know the whole clan helped me. Meth just you know kind of let me grow. He he kind of gave more guidance in the business side than me trying to get into it and me trying to do these projects and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So like giving different advice here and there. Right. Like, yo, don't do it like this. Mm -hmm. You should do it like that. And you know, and I just, you know, allow myself to be coached and, you know, yeah. Wound up, you know, doing okay. Yeah, that's dope. You just say you allowed yourself to be coached. I think a lot of times some artists won't allow that and they'll allow their ego to overtake that. Right. And that can block their blessings. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to humble yourself. If you want to make a better change for yourself, you follow the ones that you've seen do that. Right. And to me, I think that's how your story unfolded. You, you got tired of that. Of course, who wants to keep going, going back to jail right. in and out? You want to do something legitimate to feed your family. So that's dope. So let's get into your name, because I love your name, mm -hmm. Hands On. It's inspired by the legendary military tactician, Hannibal Barca. Mm -hmm. Elaborate for us on how you relate to Hannibal and why you chose that name for yourself. Okay. Well, you know, it's, you know, he was a general, he, he, you know, he was an African, Carthaginian general, went to war with Rome for over 15 years. And, you know, the just the things he was pulling off, the, the, his perseverance, I kind of, was a fan of so you know in in music you know you have people that take on certain monikers and i'm seeing i'm seeing wu-tang you know do wu gambinos and they they taking on more like the you know the monsters and stuff like that right you know i kind of wanted to wrap myself around you know what i was reading and hearing and about Hannibal the great Get ready for a journey back in time to one of the most fascinating and powerful city-states in ancient history Carthage. Located in modern-day Tunisia, Carthage was a melting pot of cultures and a dominant force in the Mediterranean. Let's dive into its rich history. Founded in 814 BC, Carthage quickly rose to become a maritime powerhouse. Imagine this. 220 docks, majestic harbors, bustling trade, and a navy that ruled the Mediterranean waves. Carthage wasn't just a city. It was an empire in its own right. But here's something you might not know. Carthage was incredibly diverse. It was a hub that attracted people from all around the Mediterranean, including a strong black or African presence. This diversity was key to its success and cultural richness. 18th century German geographer Friedrich Ratzel had some interesting insights. 
he noted that the population in North Africa, including Carthage, had a mulatto character. This speaks volumes about the racial and cultural blending that was part of Carthaginian society. And who can forget Hannibal, the great military general? He's often depicted on coins from that era, which show his Negroid features. Hannibal was a tactical genius, leading Carthage against Rome in the Punic Wars, showcasing the might and resilience of Carthage. Sadly, all empires have their end, and Carthage was no exception. Despite their valiant efforts and Hannibal's brilliance, Carthage fell to Rome in 146 BC, but the legacy of this diverse and powerful African city-state lives on in history. Carthage's story is one of diversity, power, and resilience. It was a city where different cultures converged, creating a society that was ahead of its time. Its downfall was tragic, but its memory and contributions to history are eternal. That's the story of Carthage, an ancient African monarch. That, that was courtesy of Voice of the Ancestors. Make sure you guys go check that out. Go check Chase out. I just thought when I heard that story and just kind of reading about Carthage, mm -hmm. it really made me feel like with your hands-on music entertainment label, mm -hmm. that you are Hannibal. Like you're Hannibal and Rome is like the industry. Right. And you're coming in to That's conquer true. it and get hip hop back to its authenticity. Right. Is that what your label yeah, means? Yeah, oh, um, absolutely. Like, you know, the label, once I, you know, just to talk about a little bit about, you know, Hannibal, it's, you know, taking on, you know, hit the perseverance that he had and, you know, his vision, you know, was, was epic, I thought. And I was, I became a fan and I just, associated it with the music like in my mind you know the you know i'm trying to conquer you know what i'm saying and it's not about it's no easy task by any means so you know and you know it's the guy that took elephants over the outs like right. how impossible was that mm -hmm. right but he did it you know what i mean so you know if you look at my whole lineup like you know after out of chef's kitchen which is like the first mixtape my first album was Method Man Presents Hannibal the Great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The K Slay mixtape was called Back to Back Sicily. To Sicily, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Hannibal conquered Sicily. Absolutely. Um, my first project, Barker, commercial project, is mm -hmm. Hannibal's last name. His name, mm -hmm. his name is Hannibal, Hannibal Barker. Mm -hmm. And the second project, commercial, is Carthage, which mm -hmm. is where he's from. Right. That's amazing. So I love how you took the name and you also took on a persona where it's your artistic direction you actually are framing yourself into history with that yeah. that's dope because nowadays everybody's just copying each other and mm -hmm. you know you're in your own lane right. and you're doing your own thing and you're making that direction be right. what your label means right so that's dope love it so as an artist from Staten Island, we know Shaolin is obviously famous and notorious with Wu-Tang. How has that local culture and environment influenced your music and storytelling? Who influenced you to rap? Was it somebody out of Wu-Tang or was it somebody else? I know you rapped as a hobby, but what really made you say, I'm going to do this for real, for real? Well, when I got serious about it is when I became, when I noticed that, you know, it, it, it is a business. And, mm -hmm. You know, it can be monetized and you can make money done the right way with it and stuff like that. That's when I became serious. Mm -hmm. But growing up, it it was just like a culture in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody did it. A lot of the older homies did it. I was kind of younger. So, you know, me, God bless the dead, polite. You know, that's, you know, who I, who, who I started with. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Rest in peace. Rest, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was, it, was Carthage dedicated to him? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I felt like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. But um, yeah. People don't get to see this side of you often. I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I'm kind of uh, introverted anyway. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not really social, but I've been getting there now. Mm -hmm. Got the album. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do what I need to do for the album. Yeah, you're doing good. Thank I you. love the movement, the history that you um, incorporate into it. Your bars, the storytelling is great. Thank you. Great skill, King. Great. So let's get into ice water, polluted water. I know these are your homies. You grew up with them. So talk about the experience with doing that with Ray 
and talk about how those collaborations influenced you to evolve your career. Um, okay, so you know, you know, if anybody that read Ray's book, there's when he was writing Cream, he was doing it in like an abandoned house that we had out here. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the guy that he was talking about that was there with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I had just got shot, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I was kind of messed up or whatever, whatever. So I went to jail after that. When I came back, you know, they took me out on tour, you know. I made a little bit of money with them. You know, they tried. I didn't figure it out yet, so I went back to jail. Mm -hmm. The last time I came home, when I came home, Ray had ice water. He, you know, polite. Shout out polite. God mm -hmm. bless the dead. You know, stomach. Salute stomach. Mm -hmm. PC, DC. Salute to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they was working. They was basically done. So it was a, you know, they, even though I wasn't in the group, they showed me love and they let me come in. I locked in, I jumped on as much as I could, mm -hmm. you know, three songs landed. That's what's up. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of was like, yo, yeah, I could do this shit. Yeah, you know it kind of showed you, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this, yeah, yeah, because it's like now, you know, from the time Ray went from, you know, doing what, his, what he did with Wu-Tang into turning it over and he was showing the love to the younger homies, putting people on, mm. you know, it was like, wow, okay. You know what I'm saying? Which is love. Which you know? is love. And yeah. that's the Wu-Tang culture, you know, the Wu-Tang way. You mm -hmm. know, we know Wu-Tang is for the children. Mm -hmm. And in the, and then that essence, you guys are their children. You guys right. are under them. You came up the generation under them. Right. So, you know, I, I think that's so great to see them make sure they show you all love and reach right. out. Right. And try to show you all the right path. Like, you know, don't go down this path. Do it this way. We can right. do it this way. Right. You right. know what I mean? That's the love right there. That's the bag right yeah. there. That's that Black American greatness right there. Yep. The bag. That's yep. what I call that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And that's why I love your um thing, hands-on music entertainment, home. Mm -hmm. That's home for you. Yep. You know, I love acronyms. I'm the acronym team. Queen, right, you know right, what I mean? right, right. Black education, power, shoes, as you need TV. So that's what's up. So you talked about your different albums. Can you talk about any specific moments or experiences during the production of Method Man's album? Albums that you that were particularly fulfilling to you or memorable for you or anything lessons that you learned because a method man is very on his business so mm -hmm. what lessons did you learn and, and what did you gain from being an executive producer on a meth lab one too um uh, you know i gained a lot of direction from the big homie like mm -hmm. you know what if you know if i'm taking you somewhere like i'm gonna show you where something is that you drive me there once just show me how to get there mm -hmm. so you know I basically took that and recycled it mm -hmm. a second time and a third time because I also executively produced Meth Lab 3, three. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it was just a learning experience. I mean, it's my most valuable asset to date, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even with, with Carthage doing well right now on a streaming platform. Yes, it is. I love it. Yeah. I love Carthage. It's doing well. Yeah. Talk about Carthage. Talk about your collaborations on there. What was your direction for it? And talk about how the collaborations came about. Because you have a lot of heavy hitters on that. Yeah. Album. yeah. Talk yeah. about that. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, and I'm grateful a lot of people came out to support me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At your uh, album release party. You did that, SOBs, right? Yeah, that yeah. too. That mm -hmm. too. But even in making the album, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of, the, you know, my internal support and you know, friends and, you know, family, they came out like mm -hmm. for me, like, you mm -hmm. know, when they heard I was working on it, you know, they, everybody wanted to, was open to playing a part mm -hmm. and there wasn't no hiccups and, mm -hmm. you know. They showed up for you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's dope because you know what, like, that's what really sticks to me in this industry is the relationships. And it's great because how you came up in Staten Island, you have great relationships with people. And that's what people don't realize. People, sometimes people want to chase the money or chase the fame or chase whatever they're chasing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you build great relationships with people, that's what really matters. That's what people remember in the end. Right. Like how right. that experience made them feel, right. mm -hmm. you know, what they learned from it, making memories with people right. that they grew up with. Right. I think that's what's missing from the industry, right. you know, and I think people are kind of doing their own thing in just chasing something right. instead of just being yourself right. and letting what's supposed to come to you, come to you, you right. know, Absolutely. what you think about that in a natural way. Like yeah. You got to trust the process. Mm -hmm. 
can't cut no corners. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing that I've learned in 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 dealing with the whole method meth lab situations because everything had to be in the way where he was used to. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm a small label, like I'm mm-hmm. minuscule, like I'm this small compared to the to what company, what he's used to. So yeah. I really, it was a challenge from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to it and, mm-hmm. you know, it was a blessing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great work. Sure. That's Hannibal the Great. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? We got hands on right here. Right. Um, everybody knows who he is, hands on music entertainment. So talk about the label too. Do you have artists? Is is Carlo an official artist on the label or what's going on with the we, label? We got a project with Carlo mm-hmm. that we partnered up with coming mm-hmm. out of here. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Carlo Fish. Uh, Shout out to Carlo. Long time overdue. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he he done touched the platinum plaque a couple of times right. in his life. You know what I mean? Right. So it's his turn. It's his, yeah. Right. And that might be a little bit overdue. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But yeah, with Carlo, you know, I'm working with Hugh Hef. Shout out to Hugh Hef. Shout out to Hugh Hef. You know what I'm you saying? Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, Fest Taylor, we working. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. Shout out to Fez. And Cortez. You know, and Cortez, Cortez, yeah, battle rapping, yeah, Cortez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cortez is, is doing something over here. Mm-hmm. You know, we getting it together. Is he in on the verses you guys are doing? Aren't you guys doing the verses up here? It's it's a vendor versus a vendor versus. Yeah, oh, that's a vendor. That's what's up. Look, maybe we can get a versus going on up in here. Yeah, whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Hell yeah. Get some celebrity judges and let people go and have a little bag for mm-hmm. them. You know, because I love what you're doing with the studio. You know, as far as the vendor versus the the Woo Wednesdays mm-hmm. with the special guests. What inspired that? And and tell me what direction you're trying to do some more things with the studio to integrate more. Um, honestly, honestly, absolutely, bills. You know what? You know, Inflation is off yeah, the chain. Because you know, I was, I was engrossed in Carthage. You know, doing all the necessary things that mm-hmm. had to be done, and you know, Con Edge still got to get paid. You know, so when I turned around, you know, after the album release. You no know, bills is piling up, so yes. I'm like, you know, I got to use the space, so I just started doing the Woo Wednesdays, mm-hmm. you know, just to pay a bill here and a bill there. I ain't trying to make a whole bunch of money. Right, and but you know what? I think it's good too because it's it's a way for you to do that, and it's also a way to engage with the community, right. and you can get even more business from people coming in and seeing the space mm-hmm. and saying, oh, you know, I can record at the Meth Lab Studio. You know, right. let me record some studio time. So I think it's brilliant what you're doing. I love it continue with that um because you definitely blow stuff up with that so is that what you see too for yourself with the executive producing like how you're doing like you just named all those artists is that a role that you really see yourself being in or do you enjoy more being an artist how do you Um, differentiate that experience you know a lot of people don't don't believe this but i think it's just speaking for me Mm -hmm. there is a cutoff point for artists mm-hmm. because, you know, hip hop is a young sport, mm-hmm. so to speak, even mm-hmm. though, you know, you got the, the the old guys and the old, you know, the older homies still doing it. Mm-hmm. It's and just, doing it and doing it efficiently. Right, you know? right. It, but, you know, at that age, if you're not one of them, mm-hmm. you know, then, you know, too serious, 60 years old, 70 years old, mm-hmm. still trying. So the executive producer part, knowing the way, giving the direction, knowing how to roll it out. The business aspect of it is something I could do till I'm 100. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I love that mindset of it. I think that's perfect for you. So let's get into some of your other nicknames, Hands. So let's go through them. I know. Let me see what I can name. Mm-hmm. And then you correct me or add or subtract. Okay. Okay. So we got Hands On. That's the first. Hands the Great. Mm-hmm. Hands the Relly. Hannibal the Great. Right? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Barca. Barca, hold on. I, where did you get the nickname One Nine Assassin? How did that come about? Um, you know, in my time of doing music, that was something, you know, that before I went to jail, like, mm-hmm. you know, I was having fun with it, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that was my little. That was an know, older name. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what about Jazz? Jazz is, is my name. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, you know, the name that I, the people who are. That I grew oh, up with yeah. was calling me. So my grandfather gave me that name. He used to like jazz music and yeah. you know, stuff so, like that. So it's in the blood. It might the be music. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I heard that you, or I read somewhere that you have Cherokee, yeah. your family line, as yeah. we pretty much all do. We know our, us Black Americans, we know we're the original of rural America Indians mm-hmm. from this continent, you know. Right. So, you know, what was that influence of your grandfather, like, calling you jazz? Did, did that have any impact on your musical endeavors? No. No? No, no not at all. It was mm-hmm. just a nickname that... Look at how the universe works, though. Right. 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 I winded up getting into music and, mm-hmm. you know, it was actually, I want to sh- a shout out, you know, because other than the four SMDs, I seen the four SMDs mm-hmm. do music. You know, there was a lady from Park Hill that was real close to my mother. Her name was Cecile and she had an album out back in, you know, back in the days when I was young, young. Mm-hmm. So that kind of influenced me as well. So oh, great. music been all, of, all, all around me mm-hmm. ever since then. Jazz was just my a nickname my grandfather gave me mm-hmm. and that leaked outside and that's what they was calling me. Okay. I felt like it was better than my first name. So, okay. you know what I mean? So that's dope. That's dope right there. I read somewhere that you were shot 13 times by three different people. Is that true? Yes. Is that true? Different occasions. Different occasions. Yeah. yeah. And you survived that all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's a driving factor for you to move into the music and move, you know, more out of the dealing with the street, you know? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't good at it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you, it, it's true. They say if, you, if you're a criminal and you're not good at it, then maybe Let you it should. Go. Yeah. Go. Find something else to do. So talk about Carthage. That's out. You have a video coming out. All fire. You have a couple of videos coming out. Yeah, the album is out. Yeah, the album's out. Mm-hmm. It's out. So you have a couple of videos coming soon. Shout out to Rock mm-hmm. and Neff. Ron Browse got the video Carthage. It's a that's the name of the song. Mm-hmm. That's out. Cocaine with Carlos out. Mm-hmm. And we have two on a cooker. One is going to be released next week, Friday. Raekwon featuring Raekwon and Mo from Chile. Shout out to her. We- My people always told me to work hard so you could play hard. But when you in them streets, make sure you walk hard. Stop, little homie. fire first okay. so that one is going to be next week okay and then the following friday we'll do the rape on release okay why don't we take a look now at the all fire promo okay okay yeah oh oh shit yo them niggas is back them niggas right here them niggas over there smith lab bitch but y'all thought they was gone oh, Home court, we shit. still here motherfucker yeah, man what's up niggas taking shots and shit like that so talk about collaboration um because collaboration is a vital aspect of the industry and you've had many great collaborations so how important is that to you to make sure you're getting collabs and getting other people involved with things I think it's important if you're doing an album, especially coming from a place where, you know, you're not a superstar, Mm -hmm. right? If you're one of them guys that's, you know, content, just making a living, then it's important to, you know, put your relationships, you know, to the forefront. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, staging your relationships with people on the the actual record itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel that that was one of the driving factors for me, too, because I have a lot of good relationships with people. But sometimes people feel like they don't want to, you know, use a relationship to help better something they're doing. But why not? Right. Why not? Like if you have that relationship and to be honest, you know, that's that's what made me, you know, what I mean, reach out to you and be like, hey, you want to do the show? Right, right. You know, what I'm saying like, why not? Like, you know, we have these relationships. You have to use them. And plus. It can be beneficial for both people. High ties raises all ships. 
Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I love that. So that, that's absolutely what I feel about that. So talk about your upcoming projects or what you kind of want to do. Where do you see your uh, journey going in the next, you know, two to five years and, and talk about some of the upcoming things that you are well, working on? You know, we, you know, I've had the other projects that are we going to roll out label wise, you know, after the campaign for Carthage is over, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to get on the road, honestly, and mm -hmm. get close and personal with the fans and meet the fans and, mm -hmm. you know, all the, everybody that's, you know, buying the record, you know what I mean? Shout out to y'all. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to get out there and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. in person. In person and get up close and personal right. and work on getting that introversion, a little bit of extrovert. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Get with your fans. And, you know, I feel that, you know, you want to connect with the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, get on the ground. So I did see you put something out. You know, it, it, it it's preliminary, you know, with a tour that may be coming up with Shaheem and Cap. So, you know, promoters, you know, if you guys are out there, your cities, listen, he's bringing in the Wu-Tang Generals, okay? Capadonna, Shaheem the Rugged Child, you know what I'm saying? And Hands on the Great. If you want to see them come to your city, you know what I mean? Reach out to the big homie, you know what I mean, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reach, Reach out. out. Reach out. To I'm coming. People. I'm coming. But, you know, like, again, I got, I got a lot of good relationships. So when you inquire, you know, for different prices is different things like you know i could you know probably you know soon do a meth lab run to whereas you know i could get the big homie out with me and stuff like that and you know carlo street life you know get back to that and go on the road with that we never we never went on the road for those projects that'd be great yeah people would love to see it mm -hmm. i can tell you from on on ground like the fans would love to see that Right. They would love to see it. People are really hungry for real authentic hip hop these days. You know, the industry is obviously flooded with a lot of bullshit and the people are hungry for it. So I think what you're doing is great. You're injecting the authentic, you know, fire back into the industry to let them know, hey, we still around and we still got young hitters that can come up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and show and prove it and, and make it do what it do. Yeah. So talk about the Joe Button incident and talk about what you feel about it, you know, how you feel now, because I know you've grown a lot since then. I don't like to bring up any type of negative thing, but it is a part of your history. It's a part of who you are as a person, you stand on business. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that situation and how it kind of shaped you and what you learned from it now. I was just coming out to play for my team. That was it. Right. You know, I, I don't got nothing personal, no personal rights with Son or Joe Buttons or nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there at the moment. There was something going on at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and I, you know, did what I had to do. You handled you know, your handle. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, would I do it again? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't personal. You know what I'm right. saying? And it it, it kind of, well, it, that wasn't how it got out. Wasn't my call. Like mm -hmm. it got out, but you know, I didn't do it for the popularity. Of right. It, you know what I'm saying? You it, did it for the honor. Right. Death right. before dishonor. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. So, right. you know, it kind of, it kind of hurt the music I was trying to do because now it's like people that don't know me, people mm -hmm. that, don't know that I've been rhyming for a long time mm -hmm. was basically, oh, okay, he did that. Now he's dropping an album. So it didn't land well, you know, with my music rollouts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, you know, I, I stand, you know, on what I did, you know, it's nothing personal. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I come out and I play with the team I play with. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And you ain't going to let nothing happen to nobody on that team. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that's standing on business yeah, 10 tones down. Right. And we know that's, you know, that's the way. That, yeah. that is the way, you know what I'm saying, of the real. You, it, If it were up to you, it wouldn't even have came out that that happened. Yeah. I mean, I made a couple of mistakes myself in that, mm -hmm. whole, that whole situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Ray kind of made sure to hold you down. And be like, hey, bro, like this is what what it is. And and again, it shows to the le your character that you can take that and say, you know what, my big brother is correct. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna right. follow what he's telling me to do right, right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's to remain coachable. Right. Right. You gotta remain coachable. Remain coachable. You heard it here from the man himself. Right. Hands on the great remain coachable. Young artists remain coachable. What other advice would you give to young artists coming up? 
or any artist that might want to get down with hands-on music? Like, what would you say to them? I mean, you got to trust the process. Again, remain coachable, you know what I mean? And, you know, maintain good relationships. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's it. Do what you got to do. Right. right. And, yeah. you know, whatever kind of music you do, whatever you drill, just trust the process. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, you'll gain more ground like that. Right. Right. Anything else you want to say to the people, brother, before we wrap this up? No, nah, I'm just grateful to be yeah. on BTV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Taylor B. You know what I mean? Salute. Salute the family. That's right. You know what I mean? We could do, you know, we do some work in the future, hopefully. You Absolutely. Know what I mean? wow. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Whatever you want to do, whatever direction you're looking for, I'm here for you, brother. I love what you do. The name, artistic direction that you're taking with it, BTV, that's history, hip hop, and cultural awareness. Mm -hmm. And hands on the great, hands on music entertainment, mm -hmm. that's what you're doing too, in your lane up. Yeah. And that's the importance. You know what I mean? We all gifted, we all great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We the black American bag, we the bag. So we gotta continue to move that way right. and make sure that we're moving to show and prove and increase the conditions for the better tomorrow for the babies. And that's what it's all about. So salute. I, I'm forever grateful for the interview. We in the Meth Lab studio, we getting it in. Hands the great. He is the great. Make sure you check out Carthage. The All Fire video is dropping soon. The video Stomp with Raekwon is dropping soon. Make sure you support this brother and get at him. If you need studio time, get at him. Meth Lab studio is open for studio time. And it's open for if you want to have an event, you know what I mean? Holler at my brother. You know what I'm saying? And we get it popping and you get what you get and he's going to get what he get out of that. And we all going to get better from that. Right. So that's the, that's the idea. Right. Absolutely. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we on our one, two, one, two. I want to thank everybody who's going to tune into happy Wu Wednesday. Salute method, man, the superhero yeah. salute to Wu-Tang clan, the goddamn boomer hands on boomer. Carlo Fisk, the whole team salute to the family, BTV, black education empowers true vision. I'm Teller being the queen, bringing you everything authentic from the hip-hop scene. Me and my boy Hands On is out. Peace. Tune in. Hey, yo. Black education, cultural preservation. Teller BTV because elevation. Tune into the station, we rocking the whole nation. That's right, we rocking the whole nation. Prepping new generation for mental activation. Tiller BTV's the new sensation. Stop the hesitation and learn something new. My girl Taylor B's here to show and prove.